Hello everyone and welcome to the Downseller Studio YouTube channel. My name is Jen and I'm your host here and I'm so excited to be back with you today for Crafty Chat number 11 here on the channel. Just as a reminder, in case you are new here, my name is Jen and on Ravelry, I'm Boston Jen and on Instagram, I'm Boston Jen one. And I'm super excited to have with us today, my friend, Mary, fellow designer and podcaster and all things creator. I'm so excited to have you here, Mary. So welcome. And why don't you introduce yourself to folks? Thank you. And I'm excited to be here for number 11, because when I saw the invite, I was like, oh, we're taking it up to 11. All right. Um, so yes, my name is Mary Hull, and I'm the designer and podcaster behind Kino Knits. Um, I design things on Ravelry and Kino and all the other places I'm at Kino Knits. And yeah, just excited, excited to chat. Yay. And I have to say, I love that you still have an audio podcast because I feel like we're going the way of the dodo, but I really enjoy listening to audio podcasts about knitting and it's, yeah. just, it's refreshing that there's still some out there. Yeah. I mean, I tend to listen when I'm doing other things. And so there are precious few video ones that I actually watch. Um, I, you know, listen when I'm running mostly these days. So uh, I can't really be watching something because I'll trip over my feet. Indeed. Awesome. So what I usually do at the beginning is tell folks how we kind of know each other or met each other. Mm -hmm. And I usually get about 90% of it wrong. So feel free to correct <laughs> me. <laughs> I remember right. connecting with you online. I think that my podcast started before yours, but I could also be wrong about that. It That's did. True. Okay. It did. And I feel like you were a listener and maybe a participant in the pigskin party and or a sponsor with your patterns of the pigskin party. And I remember getting to know you that way and then being so excited when I saw your podcast. And I would say we've definitely met in person several times. I would, if I had to guess, we met first at Maryland Sheep and Wool, but it could have also been at Vogue Knitting Live in New York, but I think it was Maryland. I, so, I think it was, it was Maryland. It was Maryland. Yeah. So I started listening to your podcast before I had one. Um, so I lived overseas for three years. Well, I've lived overseas more than once, but I lived in Kenya for three years and we um, came back about halfway through for some personal reasons. It's not my story to share. And it was a really horrible, stressful time. Um, and this is when I discovered podcasts. And so the very first one I found was Commuter Knitter. Um, uh -huh. But you were, you were soon after that. And uh, about that time I started a knitting blog and I tried to talk myself out of it for a ridiculously long time. Yeah. And so then later on, when I decided to do a podcast, I was like, I'm not going to waste time talking myself out of it. I'm just going to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, did the, I remember participating in the pigskin party definitely when I was still in Kenya. So that probably would have been 2015, 26, no, 2015, probably. Yeah. That's the 2014, 2015, somewhere in there. Yeah. And then, um, yeah. And then we met, we've met up a few times, but I think I'm, I was actually trying to think about this. I think Vogue might have been the last time I saw you, which feels really long time ago. It, it very well could be. And that was maybe 2018. Something like that. I don't think it 2019 was, oh no, I did go to Vogue in 2020, I think the beginning of 2020, but anyways, yes, it's been a very long And I didn't. Time. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I haven't been to Maryland in a few years, so hopefully we'll see each other in the flesh at some point again soon, but yeah. it's, this is a, a good a good little substitute, right? <laughs> yeah, I was about to say thank goodness for the internet, so. For sure. So oh. usually what we do is kind of go back and forth and share some different projects, some things that are getting us excited about knitting or crochet or whatever you're working on. So do you want to start and tell us about some things you're making? Sure. Um, so this is what I'm actually knitting. Isn't it fascinating? It's a sock, yes. um, but it will count for pigskin points because of the dyer. So uh, what yarn it's, it's fiber nymph. Uh, it's fiber nymph dye works. It's a self-striping. Um, the light's kind of blown it out, but it's it's all sorts of oranges. It was designed. It was dyed in honor of um, Gigi of Gay Glassby. So that's why it's orange. But to me, it felt very Halloweeny, uh, kind of like candy corn. So, um, but. This doesn't really feel like much, so ah, you can do another one. I'll do another one. Okay. Um, I guess I should be a good designer and talk about patterns I just released because I released one yesterday. Ooh, yes. Um, yeah, so we'll do that. I've been off the uh, grid a little, so I probably don't even know all the details of this one. So I'm yeah. 
yeah, so I've done a, a series of shawl collections now. Um, this is my fourth one like this, where I do a one color, two color, three color shawl. And they're all designed for flexible weight and yardage and just knit till you run out. But like, it doesn't look unfinished, at least I hope not. Um, so I released the two color one yesterday and it's called Dragon's Fortune. Uh, this is really gonna blow out, but this is this is neon. Wow. Um, and so it's rectangular. It's got these, let's see, neon wow. scales. That's um, cool. And so you knit this long strip of scales for about 80% of your yarn. And then you pick up on this long edge and, with another color and do one third, one third, one third. And then this is about 10% and 10%. So this is all garter. So you do all the fancy part up front. And it's just a, uh, you know, rectangular wrap. Yeah. It's <sighs> kind of low down. But anyway. It's really beautiful. It, it was funny when I took the photos for this. It was last week. Thank you. Um, I took the photos of it last week and I was in the worst mood. And so all of my pictures are like snarly and I'm like, you know what? It's a whole dragon mood. I'm just going to roll with it. So there you go. anyway, dragon's <laughs> fortune. So yeah, that's what I'm excited about. All right. I want to hear about yours. I love that. Um, I have been on a hat kick lately and mm -hmm. I'm, I'll show you another one maybe at some point later, but I just finished a hat this weekend that I'm very excited to show you because it's one of your patterns <laughs> without a paddle. Nice. Can you see that pretty well? Nice. Yeah. And is that hand spun? Yes. It's not my hand spun, but it's the first okay. hand spun I've ever received. So my friend Melissa gave me this skein of hand spun for Christmas one year in our little nitty exchange for Christmas. And isn't it really beautiful? It's gorgeous. And I have yeah. the tag. So it is Frabjus Fibers Tricolored BFL in the Cottage Garden colorway. So that's the the tag from it. I still have a ton left, so I should be able to make yeah. a doll or something else with it. But I, I had so much fun with this. And I, it's funny, we were up in Vermont camping and I'm sitting there outside in our camp chair knitting this and it looks like foliage. Yeah. And it was just, and it was the perfect, the perfect project there. You can kind of see the details a little yeah. better. Yeah. So that one, that one I designed for a retreat and some people were getting fingering some people were getting sport and some people were getting dk in their goodie bags and that's why it's written for all of those weights um and the the story behind the name is there was one that was without a paddle and it's because um the, at their retreat there's a lake it's kind of like a slimy lake but i go swimming in it every time because i can't not <laughs> and uh I have definitely officiated some pool noodle races across the lake. And so that started lots of jokes about how we were without a paddle and mm -hmm. it became the theme of the, the goodie bag pattern. So that's, okay. that's how that one got started. Yeah, I definitely, I, I used the pattern for the DK weight. Um, mm -hmm. Although this, of course, because it's hand spun, it, I didn't quite yeah. engage and I ended up um, ripping out the first one that I did and going down a needle size and going down a size in the pattern. And that worked out perfectly for me. And awesome. I wasn't getting row gauge, but that wasn't a problem, especially with the way that you write the instructions. It was very easy for me to, to make sure that I was doing the crown at the right point. So, well, thanks. I feel very flattered. <laughs> I think that might be the first time I've ever knit one of your patterns too, which feels shameful. Cause you design yeah. such beautiful stuff, but you know, as well, a designer, you. like there's so little time sometimes to knit other people's patterns and to keep putting out new stuff. Right. Exactly. Yeah. There's, I mean, for me, if, if I want to have a hope of getting stuff done, I actually have a calendar planned out pretty far in advance and you have to work backwards cause it's released. Okay. But I got to get photos and layout, which means I got to test it, which means I got to. And so, oh. um, yeah, it's, I hear you. Yeah. So thanks. It's fun and it's worth it. But yes, it's, it's fun when I can sneak in some other, like, you know, it's easy to throw in socks and stuff like that where you don't actually really need a pattern, but yeah. Patterns with any kind of detail take a little bit more. So yeah. 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 Cool. All, All right. right. Um, you want to show us. So I will show you something that's almost done. Uh, I'll riff off your hand spun and, um, this is gonna be my magnum opus. Are you ready? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so I went to Rhinebeck five years ago, I bought a fleece. It's almost done. So um, see this. And uh, somewhere around here. Nope. 
That other fleece. Somewhere I've got one. Of, sorry, all crackly. Okay. Anyway, this is this is washed, um, but it's you know fleece. So this is a Romney fleece, um, and I washed it twice because it was greasy, and uh, combed it and put it through a diz, which makes roving, and spun it and made a three ply. And then I've been knitting this sweater. And just before you and I called, um, I finished the collar and I have one side arm and sleeves sewn up and the other one not. And I put it on and I went, this fits perfectly. So it still needs buttons, but oh my goodness. let's see. I'm going to turn down the light and see if that'll make it less. There we go. Okay. All right. I'm looking for another sleeve that's not there. Hold on. <laughs> Just kind of kind of drape. But anyway, let's see if I can do this. So here's my Cable. sweater. Oh my goodness. With it These is are all my so little progress bits with a taco and you know, fun oh. things. But um, so yeah, that's gotta get sewn up. But you're so anyway, close though. I am so excited. So yeah, this is my Ryan Beck sweater. Yeah. Um, Somewhere around here, I have the buttons for it. And we're going to be separately and then sewn in, or you sew that together and then you pick up pieces. Okay, that's what I thought. It's all pieces. And then for buttons, I have these little, where's my camera? These little yeah. anchors. Those are beautiful. So, yeah, they're Melissa Jean designs. She makes clay buttons and she comes to Ryan Beck, she comes to Maryland, and I'm always like, buying them and then figuring what they're for later so those i've had those for quite a while Mary, those look like pewter to me maybe it's just how it's reading on the it's clay yeah so here's the back stamped um yeah. and it's just like a it's a blue glaze okay so yeah. cool. um, you must be so really excited that's been like yeah and i've years have you been working on that five no <laughs> yeah yeah five i mean they were big pauses of like a year or two here and there um and I have so much yarn left I probably have this much yarn again left of wow. the hand spun so I've got these like big old cakes of it um wow I don't know what I'll do with it because you haven't started plotting do you think it will be like matching sweaters or family sweaters or something <sighs> like that or something totally different um I was actually thinking this morning that I might um rescan these because they're all in cakes because that's how I run it through a yardage counter to figure out my yardage, especially on hand spun. Yeah. Um, I might rescan them. I might dye the rest of it, but I have no idea for what or what color. <laughs> Just I've got a big white sweater. Do I really need another one? Or I could knit hats for my family. I don't think it's enough for um one, I would not make a child a hand spun sweater. I'm sorry. I love them. They're rough on their clothes. Um, yeah. and I don't think it's enough for an adult sweater for my husband. Maybe they'll get hats. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. TBD. That, yeah, that's fair. And also they'd outgrow it. So even if somehow they absolutely yeah. loved it, you're not going to get a lot of use out of it. So yeah. I'm very excited about that. <laughs> Yay. That's super yeah, the, exciting. The plan is to go to Rhinebeck, although everything, any, any plans feel yeah. perilous. TBD. We'll see. I know. We'll see. That's the so plan. Like, I'm not going to Ryan Beck this year, but hopefully yeah. we'll see you before next Ryan Beck. But yeah. Well, hopefully Maryland will happen or or something. Something. I know. Yeah. So there's yeah. always there's always lots of fiber events once it's safe to do those things. So well, speaking of hands fun, I've been doing some spinning. I'm having so much fun with this. This is um, two thirds of a four ounce braid of fiber from Three Waters Farms, which just has mm -hmm. all of these beautiful, glorious greens and blues. And at first I thought I was going to do a three ply. And then I didn't bring the other stuff over here with me, but I went to a yarn haul last weekend and got another wool blend with something else that's also like more like this kind of blue color. And then I just had someone reach out to me and say um, that she wanted to send me some fiber for me to try out from her farm in Vermont. So now I'm thinking I might just like spin all of the bluey green fibers together and then figure out what I want to do with them and how many plies to make and all that stuff. So yeah, we'll see. I haven't, I haven't spun in a couple months. I got, 
I got in a rut of not doing it and I need to get back to it because it's more meditative for me than knitting is. Because as you said, designing so much of knitting is like thinking really hard about what comes next and spinning. It's just like, nah, just zone out. It's great. Yeah, for sure. And I think I found what works for me with spinning is to go back and forth between a project using dyed fiber and then doing something that's a natural fiber. Cause I really do enjoy the undyed, like beautiful. It just feels so sheepy and real in a way that the stuff just feels like fun little candy. So yeah. I like going back and forth. And once I'm done with the color, then I'm ready for something new. And then I've got some different breeds and stuff that I'm looking forward to trying out. So kind of going back and forth with that keeps it interesting enough that usually I'll keep going. I might come back with right from Ryan back from another fleece. Cause I did this one. I got a half of a fleece, um, Maryland a year ago. That's all spun up now. And that needs to become a sweater. Um, so I don't need raw fleeces right now, but maybe so that this one was white. That one was chocolate Brown. So now I'm thinking like, maybe, maybe I'm in a gray mood. It's time for a gray fleece. Yeah, so that's lovely. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I got a drum carter for Christmas. And so I also might be looking for like bits and bobs to throw into together things and make, make interesting, interesting things to spin. So super yeah. fun. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, what else should I show? All right. So I guess the most other recent thing I finished, um, I mentioned the, the shawl collection that's called the mythology collection um, is the three skein shawl. Uh, and I got to fix one more thing with the, with the pattern and then it's going to go into testing. Um, but this is for release at the end of October. And if anyone already bought the mythology collection, you're going to get this. Um, so the whole mythology thing, the first shawl was for my son, my younger son's favorite unicorns, um, other one dragons. And then my, my older son, he, um, he loves Apollo. Uh, I've been reading Rick Riordan books. Yeah. And so I have a shawl inspired by Apollo. Um, so this is, uh, gems, Lux fibers. They're out of Mississippi okay. and they have an Apollo gradients, which is five colors. Um, I took the two on the ends and the one in the middle. Cause I like contrast a little bit. Um, so this is actually DK weight, uh, and it's a half pie shawl because Apollo was the sun God. So I was going for solar theme here. Yeah. And so you see, it's got little suns. And it's got some big suns and it's got some solar rays. Um, and so, That's yeah, it's DK. It grew a ton when I blocked it, which is, you know, great. Um, but it's going to be, what's it called? What's it called, Jen? Um, Apollo's Favor, right? So we have Unicorn Luck, Dragon's Fortune, Apollo's Favor. That's what it's called. Your names are always so clever. I love that. It's perfect. <sighs> so, yeah. This will be out in late October. The goal is to get it out for um, for SAF, which I've never been to. Have you ever been to SAF? In no, Asheville? I haven't. No. It's on my list one day because um, I think Gems Lux Fibers is vending there. Oh, perfect. So, yeah. So if if so. someone bought that that gradient set, they would have enough to make that shawl? Yeah, they'd have more than enough because, okay. um, like I Are said, the gradient skin? set, they're full skeins. Um, mine were a little heavy. Mine were like 105, 106 grams. Um, but again, on this design, it doesn't matter because you knit till you run out. So I used it all. Um, and yeah, they, they died on a bunch of different weights. So I just chose DK cause I like it. And then I was really glad I did cause it was crunch time and a DK shawl finishes a lot faster than a fingering weight shawl. I'd still be knitting it. <laughs> So, I love a good, good DK yeah, yeah. weight shawl. I mean, it, it does get cool enough up here to for us to wear them. Fingering weight yeah. ones are good for inside. Um, and but it, when it's really cold and and you know the heat hasn't cranked up for the day or whatever it is, like having that little bit of extra warmth, I personally love it. So and they do they work up. It, it feels like they knit themselves. If you're used to knitting fingering weight shawls and you go to DK or worsted, it's like whoosh, it's gone. What happened? <laughs> Yeah, you've designed a couple. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to think. I think I have a worsted shawl. Might be KDK. I don't remember. Isn't Probably it bad. funny <laughs> that once you get more than like a dozen patterns, it's hard to remember. Actually, I'll show you 
another project. I, I recently released um, a pattern for fingering and for worsted weight, my Millie Margaret shawl. And I'm really excited. One of our pieces. I, I listened. I, I listened to you talk about it as I was running because that's Yay. what I do is podcast and run. Yeah. Cool. So I, I love fingering self-striping yarn and I wanted to find a different way to use it than just putting it on your feet. Cause I, I'm sure if you like self-striping yarn, you get some and you're like, but it's too pretty to put on my feet. And what do you do with it? Right. And so I designed a sideways shawl where you're increasing, you're working it sideways and increasing up to the center point. And then you do a center panel in a, a contrast or coordinating color. Mm -hmm. I prefer tonal, but you could use even speckled or something different like that. And then yeah you go back in the other direction. So, but it also works really well. So this is a worsted weight yarn that um, Michelle over at Woolens and Nosh sent to me to try mm -hmm. out. And she's offering kits for the pigskin party, which is really sweet. This is her, it's her little logo. And this, oh, nice. I don't actually, I don't even, Ashen Veil, I think is the self-striping one. And I don't okay. know that the, the, the tonal purple has a name. I think it's just part of the kit that goes with it. She matches it up. So it's a kit specifically for that shawl. It is. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah. But with the, the worsted weight, you basically need three 100 gram skeins. And of course you could do, you could do like a, a gradient or a speckle or whatever. It doesn't have to be striping if you don't like stripes. Um, mm -hmm. but it's three 100 gram skeins for the worsted weight version. And for the fingering weight version, it's more of a smaller shellette kind of size and you use 100 grams total of your self-striping. So you could use one skein of self-striping and then about 30 grams for that center panel. So it's kind of great for leftovers too. Yeah. Cause I feel like when I knit socks, I frequently have about 30 grams left over. That's what so. I figured. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nicely done. Very clever. It's fun. I, I knit on this in the car. Actually, this, this is a fun bag too. This is one of my JD studios. This is a, a, a previous year pigskin party bag, but I love it a lot. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Um, well, um, do you want to show us one more thing? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll show you something that is going to be a new project that I thought was done. Um, so we have two dogs. <laughs> We also have a guest dog who is very sweet, but who wore out his welcome a while back and will be with us for a few months. And this morning I discovered this. Oh boy. Yeah, yeah. So I gotta fix that. Was that a fling um, sock or a sort of ankle? No, okay. no. So this was this is the first one. So um, <sighs> this is the pattern called Ricamier, a lounge sock. Uh, by Mara Catherine Briner. I love it, especially for sleeping. So it fits almost like a little booty. You start up here and you knit back and forth and then you do a bunch of short rows and then you just knit the foot. Um, and what I've discovered is that out of a hundred grand skein, we were just talking about leftovers for, for mm -hmm. socks. Um, I can knit myself a pair of these and then my sister who has slightly smaller feet, mm -hmm. a pair of Rose City rollers with contrast heels and toes. And Perfect. so with a hundred grams and a mini, I can knit two pair of shorty socks, one for my sister, one for me. So these yeah, are fairly wow. new. Um, but there's oh, this. So those were so off the good. needles completely. And then they were off the needles. Yeah. Cause I, I tend to wear them to bed and then in the middle of the night I kick them off and they end up on the floor oh. and he got to them this morning. So it was my fault for leaving one on the floor but also like also hard to be held responsible for things you do in the middle of the night. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Oh, that's, a I problem. know. So and these are top down. down. Yeah. Um, they're top down, but I don't think it'll be too bad. Of course he's down into the short rows part, but, um, and I don't have any of these yarn left. So there's going to be like some weird, I'm going to just pick up and rib up and, and then find out. <sighs> Stock surgery. So that's 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 a future project. It's always good podcast. Right? There's that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we've got this dog with us for a few more months and he's sweet, but he's like he's less than a year old. I've never had a puppy in my life for a reason. Um, and uh he's like having a child. Like I cannot leave the room 
without watching him. So yeah. that's fun. That's a lot. So anyway. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm glad he didn't get to more of it. <laughs> that looks like it's reasonably salvageable. So it, it could be worse, I guess. I think I can salvage that. And good thing he didn't get to the handsman sweater because he just would have been out on the street. He would have been gone. Like he would <laughs> He's Bye. not my dog, but I would have been like, we need another plan because he can't stay here anymore. Um, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. goodness. It's all right. Well, that's a bummer. But what's not a bummer is our collaboration that we did a while back that I thought mm-hmm. we could tell folks about. I wore yeah. this one, especially because you're coming on. And I, I definitely have a lot of new um, listeners and some folks who are finding the channel who may not have been around. When did we do this, Mary? 2019? I don't even remember. I feel like nothing happened in 2020. So probably 2020. Was- I think it was 2020 okay. because Ooh. maybe it was 2019. Who knows what time is it? I don't know. Part. Not super important. I don't know. Anyways. But what do you mind telling folks what the idea of point counterpoint is? And then we can share a little bit about what we did. Sure, sure. So point counterpoint um, is another set of collections I do with a different designer each time. Um, and for each collection, uh, my partner and I each take a yarn or, you know, set of yarns and go off and design an accessory in isolation. So not consulting each other. And then we swap yarns and we swap photos of the design, but we don't swap the pattern. So you don't know how they did what they did. Um, and then each person creates a second item to go with the other person's first. So in the end, you have um, two accessory sets. What with one item by each designer, four total for the collection. So it's point and then counterpoint. Um, and what's interesting is there's not really a ton of rules around it other than, you know, using the same yarn. And obviously you designed a shawl. I wasn't going to design a cow. Like, but, but other than that, I could design what I wanted. I could really riff off it. I could just riff off the name. I could take one stitch pattern and blow it up. Like it really is wherever the inspiration takes you. Um, And I think what's cool about it is it feels constrained, but at the same time, the creativity that comes out of it. I mean, I obviously design things that I never would have um, because of interacting with that other person. So, um, so that's how that works. So why don't you, you start with your shawl since you've got it on and I've got my items handy. So handy, (laughs) spoiler, it's handy. (laughs) It is handy. So the first item that I designed is the shawl that I'm wearing. It's called the Yorkshire Meadow shawl. And this was using yarn that we got from Plied Yarn. And we had two, well, I had two skeins of this beautiful limey color and one, they're 50 gram skeins, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. of the of the gray. And so this is a top down elongated shawl which is one of my favorites to knit and one of my favorites to wear. So I said, you know what? Let's do something that's sort of my signature style. And it's it's quite simple. It's stuck in it on the top with some ridges. And then what I love most is this section here with these sort of vertical stripes. And this is done with a knit one below technique which I had never tried before this. I always thought that it would be really difficult and of course once you get into almost anything, it's it's never quite as difficult as you think. And I've got some videos on there on how to make it. But like Mary, I also like for things to be adjustable. So you're ending with the garter, eyelet garter, but you could keep going. So if you were doing this with hand spun or something else and you wanted to keep going, even for a fairly new knitter, it would be easy to, to just kind of keep going with it. Um, but I, and I love the size of about 150 grams of fingering weight. That's one of those things, the more I knit and the more I make, you start to realize like what your go-tos are. A hundred mm-hmm. grams, it's a little small. 150 is just about right, at least for kind of my frame and how I like to wear it. But I had so much fun with this. So I remember when you showed me that and I was looking at those vertical stripes, the knit one below, and I didn't know how you did it. Nope. And you didn't tell me. I show the back. What's show that? the back show the back of it because oh, sure. I expected it yes. to be have horizontal lines like stranded color work and it doesn't it maintains those vertical lines so with that I said it was handy and um, we did do like a here. zoom kind of thing like this where we we didn't yeah. show the picture we showed each other some little you know can I see that part yeah. again yep yep um and so I designed fingerless mitts to go with it so I said it was handy um and let me put this on so mine looks like this. So um, what I did was I started here and this is not knit one below. This is actually corrugated ribbing. So um, 
if you look at the back side of mine, it does look stranded. So it doesn't look the same, but it's an inside of a mitt. So who cares? Um, so it's, you know, knit one with the gray and then pearl one with the, the lime green. And then I got some of those same ridges in here. And then I also ended with the garter eyelet garter. Um, but your sense with the green and mine ended with the gray. And I thought that that also made a nice point where if you wanted a little bit more dexterity, you could fold down at that point. Um, and you know, have more of your fingers. I tend to knit my mitts really long. I want my fingers mostly covered for warmth. Um, but these I called the Harrogate tea mittens. So Yorkshire Meadow, um, Harrogate is a town in Yorkshire in England. Um, and there was a tea shop that I really enjoyed visiting when I was there, um, called Betty's tea room. It's hundred plus years old and famous in the area. And so these are the Harrogate tea mitts. So you can your little pinky finger and you know drink your tea <laughs> with the mitts. It looks yep. super fancy. I love it. These were so yep, fun. Yep. So then while I was designing this shawl, Mary was working on her first item. And right. There. Um so this one is a cowl. So uh, it's DK. Just speaking of DK. Let me stand up a little bit. But it's got um this great cable down the front and then cables that spiral out um and it's you know nice and thick and warm and big um the way you actually knit this is you start with uh so so it hangs like this so it drapes nicely in the front um but the way you knit it more logically is kind of like let's see if i can do this kind of like this. So you start at the top mm -hmm. with an I-cord passed on and then you increase down this front spine um, knitting in the round so that it makes this droopy bit. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. Drapey bit. Um, and yeah, I called this Providence Station because I, um, looking at all these cables sort of reaching out, I went to college in Providence, Rhode Island mm -hmm. and used to go to Providence train station and like go to Boston and go to New York City and go, you know, here, there and everywhere. So, um, yeah. Yeah. And, and you did so it in this gorgeous tweed, um, which is kind of yeah. unexpected for cables, but I think it works. So this was Farmer's Daughter Fibers. Yeah, I think it's their um, Craggy DK base. Does that sound right? It might. It's the tweed of. one. Yeah. It's tweed, it's DK. I remember the color was Amos something. Amos, Amos Moses? Miss Moses. Yeah. And I, I think it's Craggy DK is their base. And it's funny because I think when we decided on Plied, I think I got to pick the colors in the end. And then I think you picked the base on that one. And I, I'm not, I wasn't really a huge fan of Tweed, but I was like, you know what? She's into it. We need, I need to like give her that one and go with it. And I'm so glad that I did. But between the color and the Tweed, I think it's phenomenal. So yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, you know, and, and part of it is because, you know, you're coming at it like, oh, this is my my one point counterpoint. But of course, I'm looking at it across going, oh, I haven't used tweed yet. And so um, yeah. you're getting a little bit of that bias, too. <laughs> no, it's great to switch it up, though, and, and to give people, you know, there are going to be people who are like, I love tweed. I want that collection. So it's nice to vary it up. And then maybe someone else like me who was like, oh, I might like this one, but maybe I'll try tweed on the other one. So it's yeah, it's good to introduce people, I think, to new things. Yeah. So we did our little chat and Mary shared her beautiful cowl. And I was thoroughly entranced by that beautiful cable down the center. And so that's what I picked up on. And of course, I didn't know how you did it. And I kind of looked through some cable stitch dictionaries and I wasn't really finding anything that seemed like it would work. And so I just started playing with my charting software, which was still very new to me at the time. Mm -hmm. And just playing with how do you do twisting stitches and stuff like that. And I ended up designing this DK weight hat, which I call my Abington hat, because I think, so I've got this, the main cable up the center here, and then these two other little kind of twisted stitches sections that make this like three center panel. 
and the rest of the hat is done in reverse stockinette. But this to me reminded me of um, my family, my best friend's family and my partner Dan's family. We're all kind of very intertwined in each other's lives and have been since we were very, very young. And so um, a lot of my patterns are takeoffs on names and people and places that I that I love. So that all kind of came together. But yeah, I ended up just kind of coming up with my own cable for this. I'm sure I didn't completely invent it. Um, and I actually, I'll try this one on for you. It was really, it's really fun to knit and it's written for, I have no idea how many sizes, but several. Um, and you can kind of wear the, the panel wherever you like there, but that's what that looks like. And then after we came out with it, I did a little experiment because let's face it, there's lots of people who don't like to purl a lot. Mm -hmm. And this is quite a bit of purling. So I did a version where I just knit the rest of that and it actually looks pretty good and this the panel still stands out pretty well it so. still pops and I like it on the side like that I mean yeah. you could wear it wherever but it's a little jaunty I think yeah that was exactly the word I was thinking <laughs> cool. it really was fun like you were saying earlier Mary it's it, it can feel sort of like a constraint to say like I need to make something that coordinates with the thing that you just showed me but I found the actual experience of designing to be absolutely the opposite where I was just, my brain was on fire with creativity and, and all the different options that I could be working with. And it was, it was an absolute blast. Awesome. So, thank so yeah, you for that inviting me to do that. I, I had so much. Fun. So that was volume five that you and I did together. Um, and so the whole collection um, is in my Ravelry store or on my website at keynonits.com slash shop. Um, but you can also just buy the individual patterns, but you know, why would you, why not get the whole thing? <laughs> well, and especially if you are playing along in our pigskin party knit along, which we do through my audio podcast, um, Mary and I are both sponsors. So you get points for using sponsor yarns and bags, but also for patterns. So you could really rack them up <laughs> if you, if you knit some of our patterns. So we thought it would be fun to, to share them with you. Yeah. Well, this is awesome. So yeah, I think I, I showed a lot of designs and then, you know, one magnum opus. So <laughs> it's so fun. And what a horrible disaster. Uh, right. Way to keep it interesting for us. You brought the drama this week. So we appreciate that, I think. <laughs> well, this was awesome, Mary. Thank you so much for joining us. I will put links to all of your, your website, your social media, and all of that good stuff um, down below. And if anybody has any questions for us um you can put them down below and i'll get in touch with mary and we'll be happy to answer them for you yeah i would appreciate that and thank you for having me this is fun and it's just a nice excuse to hang out with you anyway so I'll for take it. sure awesome we'll have a good rest of the day and we will talk to you guys again real soon bye-bye perfect bye